welcome to Braid Girls, guys. <coughs> Tina from my homestead project is here again. And you guys already know that we live super close to each other. <laughs> we own the same goats. Um, we both spin. I wanted to show yep. you what we're sending. I don't know if this is the one you chose. But oh. <laughs> we, I have a That's bunch of fiber for her to choose from. So a lot of the channels have been talking about bartering and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's just really nice to have friends and neighbors you can count on and not necessarily always have to spend a billion dollars owning the equipment yourself or having the skill right. to be able to use the equipment right. <laughs> right. or the desire in this particular one. Right. This one right. is an emotional to right. toll. Right, right. Um, Tina comes and she has dehorned the last two sets of babies of the, of the goats and... It, it is an emotional thing to do it, and so it is a gift that she's willing to do it. Wow. Oh my goodness. It is my least favorite thing, but you know, it's just one of those things you have to do. It is. <laughs> or else. Or else they get stuck in every yeah. fence, and yeah. they hurt each other, and... They can accidentally hurt you. They can so. they can poke an eye out in one of your children. Right. Um, so anyway, oh, and also the alpaca is from Doug and Stacy, mm -hmm. and it's lovely, brown, beautiful, and long. It's so fun to spin. That'll be fun. Okay. Um, so today we wanted to talk about why you want to have quality stock and why you want to upbreed. You can you can get a good goat. Right. Sometimes. You can get lucky. Yeah. We got lucky because when I found the goats that we now share mm -hmm. genetics on, I got them for a steal. And... The lady knew what she had, but she was desperate to get rid of them, and she was a kind soul, a, just a very kind soul, that saw that we needed good milk animals, and she sold them to us for cheap. They were able to be registered. They were worth so much more than what we bought them for, but that never happens. No. It never happens. No, no. And the funny thing is that how I found out about you to begin with was mm -hmm. your blog. Yeah. And because back then I read blogs, I wasn't so much on YouTube. Right. And I had read your article about your goats and, you know, chamomile and right. honey, lemon and cloud and stuff. And so then I just happened, I wanted goats. I just happened to be on Craigslist and I saw a honey lemon alpine goat yeah. for sale. And I thought, that can't be a coincidence. Right. That's got to be right. from that line. That's got to be that goat. And so I bought her and she's been absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. And you don't stop there. Right. When you find your good goat, you, you there, there will always be something about the goat that you wish was a little better. Mm -hmm. And so do you ever buy a scrub goat off the street just because you want a pregnancy so you can get milk out of your amazing goat? I have bought one goat, I take that back, two goats, that were less expensive. And I lucked out with Lily. I just happened to get lucky. Now, she came from a registered father, but her mother was never registered. But she was a good milker. And I saw the mother, saw the, you know. So I tried to wisely choose a goat. But I just happened to get lucky. You don't always get lucky. The other goat that I bought was a buckling. And he was super sweet and everything. But he ended up being too small. Right. And, and um, we ended up selling it. So, uh, it's, you don't necessarily know the backgrounds and you can't not, I am a very trusting person right. and it's hard for me not to trust people when they tell me, oh, this is a wonderful goat. Oh, this does so much, you know, um, so much milk or whatever without having actual documentation. You don't know. You don't. You don't know. And they could have diseases in the herd. It's why mm -hmm. Tina's herd is closed. She doesn't mm -hmm. let she doesn't breed her buck out, um, and I only own goats from the herd that we got our goats from. Those are the only goats mm -hmm. that I own. Um, and the thing is, like you can get really good records from 4-H kids, but that doesn't mean that you have the records from the people before those 4-H kids. Right. And so. When, when you get a registered goat, you go back to the grandmother and the great-grandmother and the great-great-grandmother and you can find out teat length and you can find out how big was their orifice as long as you can find the owner and, and find out And a lot of the times cult. there's milking records yeah. if, if they're star milkers. Yeah, so. if they're from a, a dairy mm -hmm. or, or from somebody that's a really big wig registered herd, they will have milk records. Right. And, it, and even DNA now. 
Really? Yeah. That's crazy. I know. That's insanity. I know. But I did purchase my buck from, well, he is kind of related to, right. he, he's an offshoot mm-hmm. of, of our herds. Um, but he also has another herd line, um, Soldier Mountain, mm-hmm. mixed in with it, which is a huge um, dairy line mm-hmm. with, you know, star milkers and, and everything and good teats and um, really good herds. So I was comfortable in incorporating that into my herd. Right. Um and I think it's going to give me some fabulous traits that I want to improve on um, in my herd. So, and to put it crudely, I've heard it said this way: you don't just want a penis. Right. That doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, cut it, it works, but <laughs> it means that. But it doesn't necessarily give you what you want. It, well, and a lot of people they'll just go out and they'll bite any goat anywhere that that hasn't been snipped. And just because they're like, well, I want to get my doe into milk and I want to see if she's a good goat and I just want to get this show on the road. I don't want to have to take the time to go shop for a good buck. Your buck is half of your herd. Every new generation, your buck is half of that herd. Right. Do you want to be... So you never settle for as good as your does. You always want to upbreed with your buck. It's the easiest way to bring good genetics into your herd. Mm-hmm. Um and and it can it can be it it can be costly it kind of depends on your area right i don't know uh you sell we would sell our registered bucklings for about 150 dollars right um if you're buying an adult buck that's already proven you're probably starting somewhere closer to like 700 up into the thousands and thousands right um if, if you're showing, it mm-hmm. makes an even bigger difference because right. then you have the, the actual visual characteristics of the udder and of the, of the chest and of everything counts in those points. And some people make a lot of money mm. right. going to shows. I, I don't because I don't want to expose my animals to disease. I know. See, I was, I was considering taking one of uh, Marigold, one of uh, Honey Lemon's dolings to the fair mm-hmm. this year. But I just am really apprehensive about doing that yeah. because I do not, as, as you said, I have a closed herd. So that means my animals don't leave my farm and animals do not come onto my farm yeah. um, because they're healthy and I want them to stay that way. I'm afraid that if I take them to the fair, then they're exposed to everything. Everything. And, and everything. a lot of the animals that are there at the fair have been to other fairs in other states. If they're, right. if they're like grand champions, they're going to other states. It's right. not just, especially with goats. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's not just your little local fair that you're right. being, you're exposing your animals right. to. Right. They've been to Montana. They've been to Washington. They've been to Utah. Yeah. They've been, you know, yeah. And there's some things that are contagious to people. Mm-hmm. We have, we had one goat that we brought into our herd when we were first starting. I had never heard of any of these de- diseases because when I was a kid, they weren't as prevalent, but she had sore mouth and Mm -hmm. sore mouth is related to the herpes simplex type things like cold sores and stuff like that. And, um, you get it from milking your animal and then your other animals get it because you're milking those animals after you milk this animal. And if you don't catch it early enough and, um, nobody in my family got it except me because I was milking. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things that you have to have an open sore in order to contract it. But yeah, but you're how often are your hands dry and cracked yeah. from doing stuff all yeah. the time? Yeah, and if the if then the the blood uh, from from these sores gets into the milk, you're drinking the milk. So we threw mm-hmm. when when we found out that this goat was sick, we threw the milk away. Um, and and because of that, the only person that that got sick from it was me. But I still have some residual mm-hmm. issues with it. I'm not contagious because I don't break out in sores or anything. But I do when my when I'm stressed or fatigued. It's a virus in my system now that that pops up, mm-hmm. and um, none of our goats have it. Wow, I hadn't even heard of that one. So yeah, sore mouth. I mean, I don't think I have it. <laughs> it it's got it's the little hard hard sores on the outside of their udders. That, that will pop up a lot of times when they move to a new farm. The stress mm-hmm. of moving will oh. cause those sores to pop up, and it's like chicken pox. Huh. 
Um, it's very similar to ch uh, chicken pox or shingles or something like that. And it's, it's very, 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 very wow. common from going to fairs. Wow. I hadn't heard of that one. Yeah. So, but again, I have a, a much lower immune system than my family does. Mm -hmm. And I was the only one handling the milk. And, um, and so it's one of those things where you can't just say, well, it's natural, it's healthy, it's all great, and goat's milk is goat's milk, and an animal is an animal, because it's just, it's just not the case. No, it's not true. No. Um, and so for any of you who are, are looking to go into homesteading, it's worth it, not necessarily to get pedigreed animals, but to have seen the farm, to have seen the animals, to see how they were handled, um, to see... The, the goat that was sick that came to our place, um, they'd had a, a dying goat off in a little closet, shut in, dying, moaning on the ground, that uh, oh. I was there, I, I didn't figure out what it was until we were leaving, and mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, oh, that's not a dead goat, which is already pretty gross, that goat's still alive, and they just haven't put it down, and it's suffering, you know, you meet all kinds, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so if you decide you don't want papered animals, handle the animals, right. educate yourself, and more than anything, take somebody with you who knows these kinds of animals. Right. Because I did my homework. I did my research. I read all up on goats uh, before I went out to buy a goat. So I kind of knew the things that I was looking for. But, yes, it would have been, it would have been much nicer to have actually had someone with experience and I mean I kind of knew her background and history anyway so I wasn't terribly worried right. about her but I mean I do know a lot of people you know it's 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 a cost thing and kind of like in in the collaboration the uh, homesteaders versus preppers you know we talked about being frugal mm -hmm. and one of the reasons why I'm frugal on some of the other things we do on our farm is so that I can spend money on a quality animal if yeah. I need you because that's part of the income stream for my farm. It is. So that's an important thing for me to invest in. So you you can go out and, and buy an inexpensive goat, but it's just like anything else. You you don't know what you're going to get. And what does your first time freshener from your last batch that you, after breeding up, how mm -hmm. much does she give in? She gives almost two gallons a day first time, first freshening. So yes. that's as much as what a cow and she has used to give. Wonderful teats, and better than honey lemon's teats. Really? Yes, and beautiful <laughs> bag. And I was just amazed. And that was breeding up. Yeah, you know, breeding up. And if you think about it, a, a scrub goat that you get off the side of the road is going to give you a quart a day as a standard. Mm -hmm. A standard goat, same size, eating the same amount, right. will give you a quart. And I've never tasted milk that is as sweet as what comes from our goats. And we've had people that are that don't like milk that come and want to do... Nope. I love you. I love you. Shut the door. Um, I've had people that have come yes. and taste our milk that have had really bad experiences with goat's milk. Say, oh, no, I don't like goat's milk. Just and it's like, just taste it. <laughs> and, and we've been able to make, you know, yeah. butter with it, and it, it has a sweet flavor, and make... Uh, yogurt with it and it has a sweet flavor oh, yes. yogurt cheese yeah so it's um i would would i ever go the non-registered route again i really wouldn't uh even though i grew up not with registered animals and and just because they're mm -hmm. registered doesn't mean they're good animals. no that doesn't mean that they're good animals you you really do have to do your homework um it does pay to be a member of the goat mm -hmm. registration um because you can go back and do your homework mm -hmm. and do your background check and, and check out an animal before you before you buy it. Mm -hmm. So at least you know where they came from. So chances are if you know what quality the parents were and the grandparents were and the great-grandparents were, you, you have a pretty safe yeah. outcome. Which is what Tina did. She bought a buckling. She didn't right. buy a proven buck. Right. And so you can do it affordably. If you're buying an already proven dough that like is giving two gallons a day, you're going to pay through the nose. My last goat that I sold, I sold for $400 that was registered. She gave that much milk. Mm -hmm. I couldn't milk her because her orifices were too small. And so I sold her because I'd had her for two years. Mm -hmm. I trained her when she got to me. She was not good in the stanchion. And um, she she wasn't giving that much her first freshening, so the second freshening she was giving almost two gallons a day. Mm -hmm. 
So I sold her to a beginner knowing I'm giving a really good goat to this aunt, this I wanted to sell her to a dairy. Mm -hmm. I, that's where I really wanted to sell her, just because I knew it was going to be too much milk for him. Right. Because when you first start milking, right. your wrists and your arms just right. ache from trying And I still, even yeah. now, but I have carpal tunnel, so it's, yeah. it's hard for me, so... And it's a lot of milk. It's a lot of milk. <laughs> it's a lot of milk, especially when you're milking, you know, three That bucks. many. You, you have so, so much milk, and so... And so I didn't want to sell her to a beginner because I knew it was going to be too much milk and their arms were going to hurt and, and everything. And she was going to get start getting impatient. Even though I had her trained, I can milk her in two minutes. It was going to take them 20. Um, but $400 for a goat, she was worth every penny of it. And we're selling, we sold her baby for 250 and she was worth every penny of it. Um, and the only reason we sold the baby was because they wanted a companion goat. Right. And... And one of the girls decided they they were willing to sell it because I didn't want to. I really wanted to keep her because she mm -hmm. should have been really good. Um, but some people that have registered stock only show them. They don't use table. They call it table milk in the in the in the show ring type of thing. Is well, yeah, this goat is good in the show ring, and she has good table milk, meaning that the family that owns the goat will be using the milk for their own consumption. Mm -hmm. Uh, not like throwing it out to dogs or or pigs or, or, pigs or, or, or anything like that. And so whenever you buy a goat, if, if you want to do your research, if you're mm -hmm. buying a baby, tons right. of research buying a baby. Right. And if you're going to really go at it and buy an adult, you have to have milked her. Mm -hmm. You have to have tasted her individual milk. If, if they have a conglomerate and all the milk goes in together, that's not good enough. No. No. Ask them to save her milk from the previous day's milking and get it chilled so that you can drink just her milk. Right. Or even better, if you can milk her yourself. Yeah. I mean, it won't taste the same if it's warm. Right. But or you try both. Know, you know yeah. it's her milk if you milk it yourself. Yeah, you do. And <laughs> so. and so you could do both even. Have mm -hmm. them put it in the fridge from the day before right. and have you and, and and you can milk her and drink it warm. Um, I mean, honestly, just by smelling it yeah, and tasting yeah. it, even when it's warm, you can tell if it's yeah. going to be good milk. So. So, yeah, if it's skunk, it's skunk. And, yeah. Um, so anyway, we wanted to give you that information because uh, trial and error is not your friend. Time is of the essence. If you're not putting, you know, with, with a lot of projects on the homestead, you can either put time or money in. Mm -hmm. With goats, you have to put the time in and, and you have to put the money in. <laughs> Right, right. And it pays you back in spades. Right, there's, it does. There's nothing as generous as right. a good milk goat. She will feed your mm -hmm. chickens. She will feed your pigs. She will feed your children. Right. And she will give you babies that mm -hmm. will then buy her own hay. They're, right. You cannot right. replace the milk animal on the right. homestead. Absolutely. Well worth it. Well yeah. worth it. But only if you get a good one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. A scrub goat, you can always buy one, but... But you, you know what? You honestly, you get what you pay for. You yeah. really do. And they eat the same amount. Yeah. And the scrub yeah. will have more health problems because they were probably right. just a ditch cleaner. Right. Is that the right term? In our area, probably, maybe that doesn't make sense elsewhere. You'd stake oh, a goat not. out and have them eat ditch Eat things. the ditch line, yeah. So a lot of people, that's the reason. And I will not sell my goats to somebody who just wants a ditch cleaner. I don't care how much they're yeah. going to, I will or not sell my goats. Or a butcher animal, yeah. I haven't. Our, our genetics are too good. <laughs> Yeah. They're, you know, the thought of them <coughs> wasting all that genetic material on the side of a ditch, and I want them to be loved. Mm -hmm. I want their potential to be realized. I want them to be used exactly the way that they were bred to be used right. because I, you could pay me $500 for a kid, and I wouldn't do it if I knew you were just going to stick them on the side of a ditch. Right. Right. I so. agree. Yeah. All right. So okay. there's our two cents. Go check out Tina over on My Homesteading Project. Homesteading? Homesteading. Okay. Yes. I always think I said it wrong. Um, <laughs> she has so much about goats, and I love her barns. I'm always just so jealous of her barns. And didn't you just get quail, too? I did. I need to do an update on my quail. Yeah. So she has huge information over there. And I'm loving quail. Aren't they fun? And I love their sounds. The little I can't make the noise that they make, but it's such a happy little purry noise. I know. I, know. Yeah. I love them. Okay. Okay. So, we'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> I thought that was perfect. <laughs>
have an extra battery on mine. So if it dies halfway You're through the video, like, oh well. I'm like, <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't need this at the yeah. only time I'm ever doing this yeah. in my life. Oh, I know the ones where it's like, you get one shot to do this and you're done. Oops. Oops. Oh, well, okay. So they had their phone. So much for that video. Um, 